Hello, welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'll be showing you how to create heels in Clo 3D. When I first started using Clo 3D three years ago, creating a pair of shoes was quite a challenge. You had to figure out how to draft your own shoe patterns to fit the Clo 3D avatar. Export the file to Blender to separate the left and right shoe, and then re-import the file back into Clo 3D to register it as an accessory. The entire process was tedious, which is why I kept putting off making shoes. However, with the latest version of Clo 3D, everything has changed. The process is now much more streamlined, allowing you to design shoes from start to finish, all within the same software. Designing shoes has quickly become one of my favorite projects in Clo 3D. In this tutorial, I'll guide you step-by-step step through the process of creating a pair of heels. This is a two-part tutorial. Part 1, I will demonstrate how to create a basic heel block. Part 2, I'll show you how to transform your basic heel block into an open toe heel style. Let's get started. First step, to make the process easier, start by visiting the Connect website to download a free shoe last. A shoe last is a foot-shaped mold essential for shaping, structuring, and ensuring the proper fit of footwear. On the Connect official page, you'll find a variety of shoe last options to choose from. For this demonstration, I selected the female short, round shoe last design. Simply add your chosen shoe last to the cart, place the order, and download this file for free. Once the download is complete, Import the shoe last into Clo 3D. In the 3D window, I have brought in the heel last. The advantage of using this heel last downloaded from Connect website is the built-in 3D pen lines, which outline the heel silhouette and make it so much easier to generate heel patterns. Since I am creating a symmetrical design, I only need to focus on one side of the heel last. So, I will remove the opposite side to avoid any interference during the process. Go to 3D Window Toolbar and click Edit 3D Pen. Delete the style lines from the side of the shoe last that won't be used. After completing this step, I click on the heel last and lower its opacity to zero in Property Editor. Next, I use the Flatten tool from the 3D Window Toolbar. Rotating the heel last to the bottom view, or using the shortcut key 0. Select the bottom sole and it will turn yellow. Hit Enter or Return key to generate the pattern in 2D Window. Select the pattern in 2D Window, lower particle distance to 3 and freeze the pattern. Repeat the same steps. Hold Shift and select the two side heel panels. Click Enter to generate the patterns. Strengthen the pieces and lower particle distance to 3 as well. Attach the two side panels to the heel base sole with sewing tool and click Simulate. I noticed the bottom sole was not connecting properly because it's too close to the ground. To fix the issue, I will move the heel last and the heel patterns up slightly and let it simulate again. Change the sew line's fold angle on the side panels to 90 degrees to get a better fit on the heel last. Unfreeze the bottom sole. Select both side panels. Go to Property Editor, lower pressure to minus 70 to get a more snuggle fit against the heel last. Click Simulate. Adjust and align the panels with the heel silhouette lines. Personally, I prefer using a stiffer material for the sole to maintain its shape. However, this step is optional and depends on your preference. Now everything fits good, I will right-click on the bottom sole and select Flip Normal. So the face of the material will be visible inside the heel. Now that the first part of the heel is complete, 
I will freeze all the patterns and proceed to the next step. Draw an internal line on the insole pattern to determine the size and the placement for the heel base. Select the pattern, right-click and choose Clone Under to create a duplicate piece. Remove linked editing. Repeat the same steps to make one more duplicate. For the second duplicate pattern, select the internal line and choose Cut. Keep the heel section and delete the other side. Delete all the sewing connection on this piece using Edit Sewing Tool. Freeze all the pattern piece except for the heel pattern. Click Simulate to let it drop to the ground. If it doesn't fall, use Gizmo to move it down slightly. Scale down the piece to your preference. Switch to bottom view to place this piece in the center of the heel base. Once it's positioned, freeze the pattern. And this piece will be the heel tip. Before moving on to creating the heel, let's talk about what you can do for the insole pattern. Currently, it looks like a thin layer of paper, so to make it more realistic, I'll increase its thickness. There are two different methods to achieve this. The first method involves adding an insert pattern between the insoles. After making a duplicate from the original insole, I slightly lower the duplicate piece to create a gap. Use the rectangle tool to create an insert pattern based on the measurement of the insole segment. Since the insert is a relatively long pattern, I will begin by creating only half of it. Delete all the sewing connections on the duplicated insole pattern, and use the sewing tool to connect the insert pattern to both the original and duplicate insoles. Right-click on the insert piece in 3D window and choose Superimpose side to position it between the insoles. Click Simulate. Strengthen the piece to smooth the surface. Simulate again and it fits pretty well. To make the insert for the other side, I can just duplicate it by creating a symmetric pattern. Connect to the insoles with sewing tool the same way like the other side. Simulate to check if there's any issue. Merge the center front seams. and so the center back seams together. In the center back, I noticed that the insert piece sticks out slightly because the bottom insole is a little bigger. To fix this, I reshape the back of the bottom insole and make it shorter. Now the back has a smooth curve shape and it's ready to add the heel. To create the heel, first I will use Linear Measure tool to figure out the height. If you can't find Linear Measure in 3D Window Toolbar, just go to Top Window Toolbar. It's under 3D Measurement. For this example, the heel height is approximately 3.3 inches. Next, select all the heel base segments to get a total length, which measures about 6.6 .6 inches in this case. And the total heel tip length, which is around 1.85 inches. 
Using the rectangle tool, I create a rectangle measuring 6.6 .6 inches by 3.3 inches. Then use Fullness Line tool from 2D Window Toolbar, select top and bottom segment lines of the rectangle. Change the bottom segment line length to 1.85 inches and click OK. Add a center point on the insole internal line and the heel tip pattern. Also add a center point to both top and bottom segments on the heel pattern. So the top segment from the heel pattern to the insole starting from the center point. Then connect the bottom segment with the heel tip pattern. Simulate. And I can see the heel pattern is too long. To adjust it, first I will shorten the two side segments. Select the pattern, and go to Property Editor and lower Shrinkage Warp Percentage to 60. Simulate again, and it fits better but still needs some adjustment. Strengthen the piece and use Transform Pattern Tool to shorten the height slightly. Simulate, and the height of the heel fits good now. However, the shape of the heel appears kinda chunky. To refine it, I added internal lines on each side toward inner heel surface. Change fold angle to 90 degrees and simulate. To further shape the heel, create a center back internal line and choose cut and sew to split the pattern. I will also split the two side internal lines as well. Reshape the center back segment lines and create a curve shape to your aesthetic preference. There's no fixed rule for shaping the heel. You can refine the pattern until you achieve a result that satisfies your vision. Adjusting other segment lines as needed. Once the heel is complete, the final step is to clean the surface. Use Edit Sewing tool to select the center back heel sewing line. Go to Property Editor Delete Normal Map and set Intensity to 0. This will eliminate the connecting seam and create a smooth surface. Repeat the same step to remove the seam on the center front heel as well.
Freeze all the patterns and save it as a project file. And this completes the creation of a basic heel block in Clo 3D. Earlier I have mentioned that there are two methods for adding thickness to insole pattern. The second method is pretty straightforward and simple. Select the insole pattern, go to Property Editor and increase thickness rendering and adjust the curvature percentage to your desired amount. And that's how you can easily apply thickness to the insole. Personally, I prefer duplicating the insole pattern and applying the thickness adjustments to the duplicated piece. This approach allows for assigning different materials to each insole pattern, providing greater flexibility in design. That wraps up part one of this tutorial. Part two. I'll show you how to take the basic heel block and transform it into an open toe style heels and register as accessory. You won't want to miss it. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to stay updated. See you in part two.